All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into a one-year review of the Jeep Rubicon. Um, well, technically, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Um, I've had this for I've had this for one year now, and I'm really going to try and tear apart and nitpick the things I really don't like about it to give it an honest review because I really like the car. There is no question I really like the car, but for the sake of the review, I'm going to nitpick like. Seriously nitpick. Anyway, let's get into it. We're not gonna have a whole lot of time to really like dissect this vehicle and go through every little thing that's bad for it. So I'm just gonna pick five good, five bad, and five things maybe you need to watch out for. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. All right, to get on to, I suppose, nitpick number one, um, the boot space. The boot space, I find, is just not, it's not big enough. Like, for a, they really advertise this vehicle as like, you know, get out and, you know, have fun. You know, it's got, you know, diff locks. It's got all the, it's got all the bells and whistles. But when it comes to, you want to go away camping, you've really got to pack right because the boot space, there's not a whole lot of boot space, especially if you were taking kids, this would be a problem. This would be a big problem. It's just me and my wife right now, so it's not that big a problem. Um, we can fold down the back seats and we can just use, like, use all that up and it's fine. But if you were buying this as a family vehicle, I don't know, I don't think, you know, maybe it could. Maybe like you could really like, Utilize, take the rooftop off, put a roof roof rack up there. Really utilize the space a lot better. Um, but I do need to do something about this space because just stacking shit on top of each other doesn't work very well. All right. Ugh. Something that I really like about this thing, it's on the inside, is the speakers. Oh, so good, so good. You've got, what is it? Uh, I think you got one, two, three, four, five, five? Hmm, I gotta think about that. This sound system from factory without spending any more money is so good. You don't need to upgrade it. Um, I feel like you just don't get that in a lot of vehicles anymore. A nice sound system where you can really just like pump the, ba pump the bass and like pump the music and you can just feel like you're at a concert, basically. So, we're gonna keep zigzagging, I suppose, this. So, it, we went a dislike, then we went a like, and then we're back to a dislike. Um, one thing I don't like about this vehicle is, this is a very weird little nitpick, but it's probably half my fault, but I don't think it's my fault at the same time. The problem is, when you're washing this vehicle, I have noticed that the seals under pressure do not hold um, do not hold like airtight, I suppose. So like all these door seals, all in here, these ones up here. If you are sitting there washing your vehicle with a gurney, um, you will get leaks on the inside of the vehicle. Nothing major, okay? Nothing major. Just a little bit of a dribble. Nothing, like nothing to even write home to about. That's a proper little nitpick, but I've noticed like every time I wash the vehicle, it can be raining, it will never happen. It's only under pressure. I wash the vehicle. It has like a little dribble that dribbles down here and into the, into like the little cup holder thing and, you know, um, cup holder thing, the little door handle thing. Um, I've just noticed like, you know, you get them everywhere. And like, especially if you're really having, like if you're trying to get the mud off and you know, you're really like soaking, soaking the water in and you're really trying to like spray it off. Um, I've noticed it really starts to dribble quite a bit. Only under pressure, not in the rain. Never, ne it's airtight in the rain, but under pressure, it is not. All right, so we're zigzagging again. So I'm gonna go back to something I don't like about this vehicle after owning it for one year. Um, something I noticed that annoys me the most is the fiberglass roof. This is a nitpick. This is just me nitpicking, but it's, it's the honest truth. The fiberglass roof I've noticed is super, as you can hear, it's super like a hollow, not very like, not very like structural and like not very sound dentoning material, if that makes any sense. So I feel it's just super loud. 
that's what I'm trying to get at. It's super loud on the on the inside. It's not a very quiet vehicle. Like you drive in these new, like you drive in a new D Max, you're like, oh, this is actually quite nice. It's not very loud. You drive in these and you're just like, Jesus Christ, that's bloody loud on the outside, especially because it's shaped like a brick and like the wind just fucking slaps the front and then like it just just yeah, it just doesn't sound quiet on the inside when you're on the highway. But it also like I do have a rooftop tent on, so maybe I am like you know, maybe I'm just like, oh, it's not, it's not, it's not quiet, but like I have a rooftop tent, so it probably causes a lot of my issues and I've just forgotten on how, uh, how quiet factory actually is. Something I really like about this vehicle is it comes with recovery points. This is only on the Rubicon version, I'm pretty sure. It comes with recovery points on your factory bumper, which is sick because I don't have to go spend $2,000 after buying a brand new vehicle to go get a you know, a custom bumper or like an ARB bar or whatever, I can literally just take this thing out wheeling, just, just throw some bigger tires on it or just take it as it is like I have been doing. And I can still get myself out of sticky situations and it's also the bar is winch compatible. You just gotta buy a winch plate, which is a little bit expensive, but the bar is winch compatible, which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on to something I dislike. <laughs> One thing. <clears throat> One thing I really want to make clear is like, I'm just here to show you because this thing is, I think it's on 32s or 31s. Um, but you can see in front of us, this is, this is um, an interesting little section and it's completely like, this is a completely stock vehicle. And you sort of just like, it's, it's twin locked. It comes factory with BFGs, which is pretty cool. You can literally just and just make it work. Bit of a wheel lift. Oh yeah. And we make it up. Oh you see why I need bigger tires now. But you can really see, like, you can really see how capable this vehicle is. It's crazy capable. It feels good. It feels nice to drive. It's not like real jolty. When you um when you put it in full low, you can really tell it really like slows down the movement of your accelerator it doesn't let you just ping it off its head it's really like ooh, like real like slow movements and so good for off-roading all in all i really i kind of sucked at this video because i couldn't name five things but that i really hate about this vehicle um i don't have any bad things to say about this vehicle it's fantastic like it's twin locked it's got pretty good tires on it from factory, so I haven't really changed them. They're BF Goodridge bloody tires. And I think they're a 32 inch tire somewhere there. But anyway, they're a 32 inch tire. I'm gonna say they're a 32 inch tire from factory. It's got pretty pretty good flex for what it's got. You know, it's got heated seats, great air con. You know, it's got Apple Play. It's got like, uh, it's got Apple, uh, Apple Car Play. It's got like your Samsung Auto, uh, Android Play, whatever that's called. Um, it's got everything you need and just so much more. The only things I can really think of is like the fiberglass, the fiberglass roof makes a little bit too much noise. And I suppose it's like a petrol and uses like a little bit too much fuel. But if you compare this to a V8 Land Cruiser, no way. V8 Land Cruiser's in the same category, mate. Don't even say diesel's better because you're paying more for diesel and you're paying, you're getting at least 11 to 12 liters in the, in the bloody um, V8 Cruiser. So you can't say, that it's wasting too much fuel because really it's not. It's really not. Um, but I don't really have that much stuff to nitpick it about. It's such a good vehicle. It's such good. I'm so proud of it. And I think a big thing that shies people away. This is one thing. Okay, okay. Here's a, here's a nitpick. The things that shy people away from buying a Jeep is honestly the people. The Jeep people are pretty like they're they're a bit annoying. Like let's be honest. Like anyway. That's gonna do for this week. I didn't really have a whole lot of um, didn't really have a whole lot of time to make a good video this week. I ran out of time. I went to the beach last week and I actually ended up losing a lot of my footage because it corrupted, so I couldn't even upload any of that, which sucks. Um, food and wines this weekend, so it's literally today because today's a Saturday. Um, food and wines this weekend. If you know where that is, it's in Toowoomba. It's food and wine. Um, I'm gonna be putrid tomorrow. I'm gonna be absolutely putrid tomorrow, so I'm gonna be editing this. Uh, this video out tomorrow, but I'll see you in two weeks time because we'll be probably diving back into the Ranger 
Um, we need to get that engine bay ready because we have the new engine arriving shortly. Um, I really, I want to tell you what it is so bad. It's not a P5AT. I can tell you that for free. It's not a P5AT. All right. It's going to be a different engine. I'm super excited for it. Um, I just don't. I'm quite. I'm just not quite ready to dump that engine in yet. I just want to get a couple more things tidied up before I uh, buy that engine and put it in. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys really enjoyed me testing this Jeep.